So today, let's talk about legendary money rules, which I have been following ever since I have been getting money from my parents as a medical student. So listen well and apply that which you feel can be applied to your life. So let's get into it. Rule one, my savings rule. You see, when I was a little child, when those big aunties and those big uncles came to come and visit us, when they give us cash, myself and like my siblings we had this little brown box where we go and store the money and later on when we are feeling you know uh, like oh, we need to buy biscuits or sweets or just do something or buy noodles and you know, enjoy ourselves we go to that box and take a little part of that money out and use it for ourselves that way we were able to afford stuff even when our parents were in, in the office we didn't have to wait for them to come back and you know we start telling them ah mommy i want to buy sweets uh, sometimes they'll say no so always we just had that and it was such a liberating feeling to be able to like you know get money from your purse and enjoy ourselves so when i got into investing my 100 level days i started receiving money in bulk in big amounts and i was like whoa whoa at that point at that point in my life i stumbled upon a great book called the richest man in babylon and a very profound quote which from the book says a part of all you earn is yours to keep and that simply opened my mind to how important keeping a little part of your money to yourself even if you're not planning to use the money for anything just that act of keeping money away for yourself is going to be a liberating factor or like or it's going to help you later on down the line that made me search deeper and i found the 50 30 20 rule however i have modified this rule to fit my needs and i do what i call the 70 30 rule so normally the 50 30 20 rule is simply that you you know 50 percent of whatever you earn would be for your needs that's anything you like food transportation and all of those things that you know that you can't do without why 30 percent goes for your wants maybe you just want to flex here and there get some things you want so you can do without them but you want them so you go for it why the 20 percent goes into your savings and you know maybe investments what i started doing is 30 percent of my of any amount of money which i get whether as whether it was gifted to me whether i made the money myself whether it was sent to me by my parents 30 percent of that amount goes into savings why the rest of the 70 percent simply goes for my needs and my enjoyment because well we must chop life and decide to save just 10 percent and you know <laughs> use the 90 percent for your needs and wants you can say 75 25 and you know all that you can do 50 50 more or more that's not a good idea that's not a good thing to do it's, it's it's counterproductive so something that really helped me is being able to automate my savings and i've been able to build an emergency fund with carry wise you start your saving journey by clicking the link in my description box down below and um start saving up for emergency funds it's always nice to have an emergency fund around so you know click the link in my bio and get started rule two is have a budget so you've just saved 30 percent of your money if you're like me with carry wise and so what do you do with the remaining 70 percent how do you share it in a way that it will be able to sustain you throughout like the rest of the period till you receive another amount of money and that is why you need to draw a budget you see um i'm working on a video where i track my expenses for a month and show you how i use data from tracking my expenses to create a budget for the next month this will be a good time for you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss that video when it's out yes we have been made able to keep a budget or make a budget to keep a cap on my daily expenses so let's say i want to spend only 50 percent of my money um and maybe that 50 percent is like um let's say twenty thousand. i divide that twenty thousand by 30 days and or 31 days depending on the month and i say okay this is the total amount i can spend in a day sometimes in some days i spend one and some days i spend less but in a week i already know from that i know how much i can spend in a day how much i can spend in a week and you know that just stops me from buying things based on impulse to live on a budget most times you have to live below your means and that's something we all need to learn and this brings me to rule three which says before making a big purchase i must be able to afford that product twice and anytime i really want to get something and i see it's a highly expensive product or something which i know i need to save a lot for sometimes i i wait i i i look at the amount i have and i'm like okay if i buy this thing once will i be able to buy it again immediately and if i can't buy it immediately i don't buy it at all however if i can buy that product i would follow my rule 
four which is wait three to six days or maybe even longer before you decide to make that big purchase we are emotional beings and we mostly buy things based on emotion not based on logic we see something we like or we see something on someone who we admire and we're like oh we want to also get that thing so that we can have that emotional feeling of being among uh, you know the top people or the joneses or whoever you know so i i know so many times we buy based on our emotions and we buy dumb things in order to impress people who don't really care about us like, so instead of me going to get a shiny device immediately i see someone holding another one or getting a shiny new product because someone close to me is using that within three to six days i'm trying to make sure those emotions have died down a little and see whether if i look at that product i might still want to get it and giving myself reasons over those three to six days why i may need to get that product or why i don't need to get that product has really helped me you know staying sticking to my budget and spending my money wisely in short stay contented with what you have and don't have a logical coral which is like great in yoruba language rule five will be take your money which is given to you your pocket money which is given to you as salary for you to be a student once i say having that mindset that my parents are sending me this money as salary so that i can be a good student or i can be a good worker if i'm like if you are working your salary is so that is because of you are able to produce stuff so it has just so when i receive money instead of me being you know, oh <laughs> i'm entitled to this money even though i'm kind of entitled to it because but <laughs> but i go ahead and say oh this money has come to me and so i have to do my best attend lectures read my books and produce a good result and that just really helps me to know that this money is not free money per se but it's money which i am working for and that just gives me a sense of responsibility that i'm working for this money so i must spend this money wisely also the sixth rule which i follow is don't borrow or give money out which you can't forget about and also learn to give I put those two things together because uh, of course when in school there's sometimes that your friend is going to need a little bit of money and they will come to you thinking you are you know the big boy in town <laughs> and you ask for a certain amount of money like sometimes very outrageous amounts and you just like what at that point you should know that if you borrow someone money there's a high probability that they will not give you back and so the only what i do is what i can afford to give and even let go is what i give out so there's there, there are a lot of times you have to say no to a lot of people and you need to learn it no is a very powerful word which you need to start using to gain control of your time and money and not just leave it you know doing about and i i said learn to give like giving givers never lack and the more you give the more you receive i don't know, kind of I don't know how it works and i know it's it's just it just happens i noticed that when i give out stuff like somehow somehow from somewhere else, someone else will just end up giving me stuff or someone else just end up bringing me food uh, or all those kind of very weird scenarios that just happen around the world and you know many many of the billionaires and like millionaires that you see around they have this charitable spirit and it's something you start learning from a young age so you know take out a little part of money your money like you can always learn to pay your tithes 10 percent or you can take out this part of money and say oh this part of money is what i can afford to maybe give out or like to a friend or give it as arms or give it as giveaway or something something like that but just be a cheerful giver and the feeling you get from doing that is a marvelous one and the way god provides when you start giving freely is amazing rule seven is one of the best rules which i would be which i follow which i give me which is learn to make money you see when i was in secondary school i was trying to say contrabandist they, they, they never used to allow provisions into my school but i always found a way to you know sneaking provisions and all those kind of stuff i didn't say it, it was not legal but well it was how, what i needed to do to survive and later on i found out that people were in need of that and i one way or the, one way or the other i said people, oh you can give me this and i will sell it and i'll sell whatever i have at very outrageous prices i can remember selling like a stick of parago or like this um digestive biscuit for 100 naira or so it was very ridiculous but it's because of the risk you know the higher the risk the higher the return on investment or something like that yeah i was, I was risking my my stay in school <laughs> for money but that that's not that's not the point i'm trying to make here the point is anywhere you are you must look for an opportunity to make money in school there are many avenues to make money 
and you should be looking out for all those little little loopholes lo looking out for oh what what is needed at this place that i can provide and someone will give me money for and that is a very great thing to do because the money your parents give you alone is not something you will always want to rely on and you may you always need an extra source of income to supplement or complement the money which you are receiving so another rule is going to be to watch this video over here where i talk to people about how they are building their business in medical school i don't know whether it's going to be out yet <laughs> if not watch this video over here and you know stay legendary see you later